on today's episode of the Fresh Wave podcast. So do you do like scrunching? I do. Yeah. yeah. Do you use gel? I don't. I have scrunched my like forearms are beating. Sometimes <laughs> I'm just like, just get dry. Awesome. Uh, especially in the mornings if I wake up late. But I haven't woken up late yet for school, so. Let's go. Good. Yeah. Right on. Go. Good job. Welcome to the Fresh Wave podcast, which is for youth by youth. And Johnny, here this we go. is season one, episode six. We have some very special guests on. I'll introduce um, the one right next to me, mainly Tim, because I want to give a shout out to him because he has been the pioneer of the Fresh Wave production. Man so, behind the scenes. Yes. This is my first podcast that I'm at the table. Yes. That's true. Ever. 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 I've Ever. A lot many of podcasts. You've heard my voice. Mm. Now you see me. This is what I look like. So, so yeah. And you'll never yeah. see him again. Probably not. <laughs> That's <laughs> the it, only guys. One. We also have somebody else here. Another yes. one of our high school students. We got Mr. Pierce onto the show. Welcome. Yeah, excited to be here. We are glad to have you. Yes, yes. Get the whole room applauding. Yeah. So we're excited to have you join. And, you know, each, each episode we talk about something. And today, what is that something? Talking about trusting God. Trusting God. I love it. Yeah. That's going to be good. So good. So good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Pierce, give us give us a little uh, little word. Why why are we talking about trusting God? Cuz I think it's it's important and I think it's definitely easier said than done. Because it's like you go through seasons and challenges and you're like, "Oh yeah, well, I'm trusting." But it's like, "Are you?" Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm and it's definitely easy to say you are, but not follow I guess the right steps, if mm -hmm. that's the right word, and mm -hmm. actually trusting. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's easy to, yeah, like you said, like, oh, yeah, I'm trusting God. But if you took like a step back, you'd realize you're trusting in a lot of other things yeah. as well. So, oh, it's going to be good. I'm excited to talk about this. This is kind of nerve wracking. Like, yeah. I've never been at the table for like a big production. <laughs> You've never had a camera on your the face. Lights, I mean, we, we filmed something once, but it was before the lights came in and the ship lap went up. And it's like, this is, I that's feel true. Yeah. It's that's true. a little nervous, guys. Yeah. I didn't even prep. So. You've got a nice topic to, to ease, ease Tim into <laughs> hmm. podcasts. Yes. It's one, I'm, one I actually think I sort of ta uh, taught on Yeah, last well, year. Last year? Oh, yeah. not the anxiety one? It was sort of, but it's also like sort of a similar topic. Okay. Trusting God and, you know, trusting God so you, to not be anxious. Yeah. 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 And I think it's, I think it's in Matthew. Um one, I think it's in Matthew 6, one of like the titles before it talks about like those analogies about trusting God, like one of the subtitles, obviously like um, people who made, you know, the canon put this in, like I don't think this is um, what the writer said, but one of the things that people who are putting the Bible together, one of the things that they titled Matthew 6 when it talks about the sparrows and the lilies is the cure for anxiety, right? And in my Bible, I see the title is like the cure for anxiety. And then it goes on about trusting God. Like even, I feel like we were talking about this. With we Christina. did last we definitely What were. a great segue. Yeah. <laughs> we definitely did. <laughs> like, uh, what is it? The sparrows, sparrows the, lilies. the lilies. Yep. So in some way, people who are putting the Bible together interpreted that passage as like trusting God is the cure for anxiety. Hmm. Kind of tied together, as you said. Yeah. Yeah. So, trusting God, what would make the different seasons that we have? What would make us trust God more? What would make us maybe trust God less? I mean, I would just say, it's like, it really is like just like good and bad. Mm. Because it's like either you're stressed out at school or, or work or you can't find a job or money is tight or like that's on the scale where you should be trusting him the most mm -hmm. it's like you should always be trusting it but then it's like you really need to focus on making sure you're like really locked in with just prayer and reading and staying in the word and then there's other times where it's better where it's like you're not really as worried mm -hmm. it's like you're just everything's everything's fun it's like school is good work is good it's just it's kind of like the op it's just the opposite end it's like good and then the bad and then Almost like 
you have to be in the bad to get in the good and then you understand why it's so important to trust in God and like see what he has planned for you. Yeah. It's like that uh the classic you like feel like you don't you like you kind of forget God sometimes in the good times and all of a sudden you yeah. remember him. Yep. When the bad times come, I feel like it's the same with trusting him almost sometimes you can get so used to not relying on him mm-hmm. or thinking you're not relying on him during the good times that mm-hmm. when a bad time, a bad season comes, all of a sudden you're freaking out. Yeah. Cause it's like you went so long, maybe you went through this really great period of school or you had a really great football season or something like that. And all of a sudden something bad comes and you're like, Oh my gosh, how am I going to deal with this? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How am I going to fix this? And the first thing on your mind isn't trusting God because you haven't been trusting God, even with when the good times are there. Um, I think that's something that's happened for me. And I think that's something that happens for a lot of people where it's like things are going well. And all of a sudden big anvil gets dropped on your head. And all of a sudden it's like the, all your thoughts are, how can I fix this? Mm-hmm. What's going to happen next? And your, your immediate, as a friend of mine likes to say, your immediate reaction should be drop to your knees and bring it before mm-hmm. the Lord and just trust him. Mm-hmm. What makes us, that's an interesting ob- observation, right? When the whirlwind hits us, when things are going really well, and then all of a sudden that turns around, we start struggling, we start hitting uh, with, with suffering in some instance, and our immediate reaction is to turn inward and say, okay, what, what did I do wrong? How can I fix this? What can I do? So how can we react in a way, as you said, instead of reacting inward, how can we react outward and look up to the Lord? So when those challenging times do come, instant reaction, like, let me go to God. But as you said, that's, that's challenging. That's tough to do. So why do we, why do you think we do that? I think we just got to remember at all times that God has a plan. You know, it's, we're looking in we're, right now, the sermon series we're doing is on Ezra and Nehemiah. Mm-hmm. If you look back all those years before, the reason why they have to rebuild this wall, they come back um, to their homeland is because they left it a while ago. They were, it was a, was it Assyria that they originally went to, that they were, they were brought in and by the Assyrians. But or, they were in captivity? When they were in, in captivity. Babylon, the Babylon, right? yeah. Mm-hmm. Babylon's and the Assyrians are, yeah. Um, but... They, I'm sure the people, when they were in captivity in the beginning, didn't realize that what they were going through was eventually going to be used by God for not only the good of the Israelites, but we read it and we use it every day in the Bible. It's in the Bible, and it's being used for our good today as well, and all Christians all over the world. Hmm. I, I want to read some scripture, and I think it just kind of... It displays kind of how we should, I think, react and where our hearts should kind of line up when we have that things are going well and then all of a sudden we're thrown into a fiery furnace. And for some, that was quite literally. In Daniel, right, his friends, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're getting thrown into a furnace and they say some words of, hey, you know what? Our God, regardless, is going to be God. And our God can deliver us. And I love how they say like, but even, even if we are consumed in the fire, like our God's still God. So whatever outcome comes from this fiery furnace, God's still God, and we're going to trust him. And then obviously, if you know the story, they become, they come out as not even smelling like a fire pit. You know, I like fire pits, stink after, especially if it's a smoky one. If you're thrown into a fire, probably going to stink. Not even a smell, not even a clothing, burned up. And in verse uh, 28 of chapter 3, the king Nebuchadnezzar answered and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants, who trusted in him and set aside the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of cool that you see their reaction is ultimate trust in God, not themselves, not the king, not any other uh, person or circumstance. So they say no matter what happens, trust is in God. We'll let him handle this. Right, let God handle the rest, yeah. and that's kind of what we see here. And that's just the the trust reaction is to God, and I think that's something we should all kind of strive for. And they were faced with a fiery furnace. Fiery right? furnace. Yeah. And you look at what Paul said, <laughs> and um, what Paul said it's like to live as Christ and to die is gain. Like these people in the Bible were faced with way worse things than we in America, New Jersey, mm-hmm. or wherever you may be listening to this. Hopefully, all over the place um, <laughs> might <laughs> might um, might be going through. So it could just be like getting through a tough school day that you might have or getting through, you have this like you're in a fight with your friend and it's really awkward and you're trying to 
you have to you're in a class with them oh i have biology with judy today and we're in a fight <laughs> um and just knowing that you sit next to her and you're trying to make up with her and it's just those things trusting god and those things because you got it you know the outcome is going to be good no matter what it because at the end of the day like Paul said, to live as Christ and to die is gain. No matter what happens at the end of the day, you're God's child and you're going to be with him. Mm -hmm. So Amen. The Daniel in the lion's den, or I'm sorry, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It's another good example. Yeah. <laughs> is, <laughs> right. I guess yeah. almost the same thing yeah. in the sense that it's way more, the consequence is way bigger than we could ever possibly fathom mm -hmm. here, especially in America. But mm -hmm. regardless of that, or if it's you broke your pencil and you don't have one left in your backpack, like, God will provide. He may not give you a pencil, but he's going to use it somehow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When we talk about, this is shifting gears a little bit, but when we talk about wanting to have an outward focus, meaning when we're faced with something, we come straight to our knees and we talk to God about it. Um, and how Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and Daniel, they modeled that. Is there a sense, and yes, I turn inward a lot of the time. I think we all turn inward to... Um, what we have done wrong, how we can make it better, how we need to change. Is there a sense, though, that although some of our reactions might be inward, like Johnny was saying towards the very beginning, Christians often see God in the hardest times. So is there a sense that in those times, there is a part of us that does actually look outward, a little part of us? And is that like natural? We're humans made to... Is there a sense that we all know we're naturally made to look beyond ourselves, even though like those anxieties about what we may have done can surface? Is it possible that there there is always going to be a part of us that is going to look for a higher power? Wow, I just turned into theology for Whoa. a one. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's wow. a deep thinker, Pierce. What do you think, man? <laughs> Welcome know. to the show. <laughs> your dad tell you to ask that question no. <laughs> no. jeez louise that was, that was not that was not a chat gbt question no, that, was a, that was a henschel brain that was a god created mind mm, that, created I, that I, thought I think the pastor should tackle this one <laughs> that's an interesting question yeah <laughs> i mean i i, I think um, there is a yes yes because i think I think in all heart, all of our hearts, I think there's a, a, a small part that is always seeking something. And we don't know necessarily know what that is. All right? We have a, a, some quote, some theologian, some pastor. Right? We all have this uh, heart shape or box, some like shape in our heart that we're trying to fill with all these things. And none of it actually ever satisfies it. Unless and that's we, outer. That's that, outer. Those we're are things from it. the outside. Exactly. And I think that those cert those moments that we're doing all that we are seeking something we just don't know what that is yeah so i do think that all of us in that circumstance may be seeking higher power but some people don't think they exist some people might think they you know that would let them down mm -hmm. they don't they're unsure of how they go about that and so we just naturally turn inward because it's so much more feasible in in, in your perspective like well i'm here i have control yeah. a lot of us think we have control i think that's another issue and so we just automatically look inward and say all right i have to do this yeah when you ask the question were humans created to you're asking to look to look outward or to look when you say outward to look to to look to god is that or to look Honestly, to something else. not even God just outward like yes to God I believe that we are all made like that's that's how we were made like that's how people are supposed to function but anything the point is is that we're not supposed to look here like mm. we're not supposed to look yeah. to the inside of ourselves I'll, I'll answer that like this so we believe that God made us in his image and that goes for me that goes for you that goes for everyone um so in that sense yes he i would assume god hardwired us to look to him um for things but also he puts other things that he has created in our path mm -hmm. to go to as well um so i would have to assume yes um because something that i've always thought and said especially in our youth group is that Community is so important because you don't have to do this alone. And sometimes God works in you through the other through the people He puts in your way. Um, so that would 
qualify as an, an outward thing, right? Right. Cool. So I think I might have tackled that. <laughs> yeah. Tough theological Sorry. question. No, I that was a really good question. That's a, might have to, to bring to that throws. up to Bob on behind the pulpit. Yeah. Check it out. So can we, can we, can we come up with some of the things that who or what people kind of typically trust in? Yeah. So yourself, we've kind of nailed that one. What are some mm-hmm. other things people trust in, in their daily lives to get them through their, 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 their day, their good days, their bad days. What do people place their trust in? could be something you guys do or other people. What would you say? So selves, money, mm-hmm. career. What else do you think? I would say hopefully God, obviously. Hopefully God, right? <laughs> yeah. Right? So some, hopefully. What else? could be something like another coworker. Like if you're yeah. – or a school, someone you go to school with or a brother or sister or parent, like just assuming that – you know, going through a tough time, assuming that they will do something for you, mm-hmm. assuming that they'll pave a way mm-hmm. to make it easier for you. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. I think there's a lot of things we trust in that we don't, we're not even aware. Hmm. I think sometimes those days we go home and we're not feeling great, we're sad, we're depressed. I think it's because we have a lot of trust in certain things to bring us fulfillment and they're not. How many times do you hear, oh, I need to do X, Y, and Z when I get home because it just helps me relax. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. have to sit down and watch this show. I have to <laughs> sit down and read my book. I have to. Yeah. I just need 10 minutes just to lie down on the couch because I need it for x y and z so like that falls in that category yeah Yeah. so pay attention to the things that you are you all are saying none of this is i need to sit with myself and help myself Mm. (laughs) all of it is i need to even if it's something like i need to sit on the couch and watch tv or i need to talk to this person or i need to talk to my mom my dad i want to talk to my girlfriend my boyfriend whatever all the things that we just listed are not here. Like I've never mm-hmm. heard anybody be like, well, I'm going through something hard. So I'm going to go sit on the couch and, and contemplate it for a really long time. And hopefully I can fix the problem. Like we're always turning to things outside of us, regardless if they're reliable, good, trustworthy or not. I have heard of one guy who did a darkness retreat. Um, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> he, before, no. I don't know if you, I don't know. I'm sorry. We're, we're, <laughs> It just, it's just well, funny that you said that Aaron Rogers because during Hot Water Habits. Before, uh, yes. before, <laughs> before he did some, before he decided what team he was going to play for, which ultimately was the Jets before he got hurt, he signed up for a darkness retreat where he just sat alone in a dark room for like three days and that was it. So I guess maybe some people just look to themselves, Ooh, but I don't know if well, Aaron Rodgers is the greatest the example. I, that's a good, maybe he needs Is that to, what he's looking to? Is, is the dark room the catalyst <laughs> yeah. in order to look inward? I don't know. It is, but yeah, it's partially outward, but I think it is also par- partially inward as well because you are making those decisions. So like you are making that decision to place your trust in whatever that thing is. Yeah. So I think it's a kind of a little bit of both, but definitely a lot, like we said, it's just immediately this thing, this thing, that person, that person. Yeah. We quickly reach out to yeah. and see if they can do it. Mm-hmm. But they'll fail, right? Because yeah. people people will fail, people will let you down, people will not bring what you are looking for at some point. I don't think any of us can look at one person and say that person's never made me upset, that person's never failed me, that person has been a hundred percent perfect in a relationship. I think that's yeah. just life. Yeah. All right, so we're coming to the point of the show, <laughs> which Tim knows. <laughs> And if you've been listening, you obviously know as well. I do. Hit me with your best shot. Fire away. <laughs> it's so that's pretty horrifying. good. That was no, the best no, that one was so that far. was in tune. That was in tune. Thanks. But then you gave up halfway. Yeah. <laughs> Fun fact: yeah, Felicity hit a ding dong, a home run, in uh, gym class today. A dinger. So Those shout out to the no most athletic person I know. Felicity went yard. I'm the most athletic person right? I know. All right. Well, I got one for Tim over here. Many of you, if you know Tim, you know he is a sports fanatic. You could ask him a sports stat from 1975 on the Baltimore Orioles. I wouldn't know it. Wouldn't? Well, maybe you wouldn't. <laughs> so, of course, mine has to deal with sports. So I kind of have two, I think I have two questions. They're okay. both, they'll both be pretty quick, but okay. just to see what, where your heart lies. Hmm. So, and you got a Burrow jersey on today. I am. I just got back Wonderful. from Louisiana. Was that my first LSU game? Surreal. Anyway, onward. All right, onward. <laughs> so two questions. First one. If you could be the best athlete in any sport that you could choose, which sport and what team would you play on if it's a team sport? T 
team sport, I would say. I don't even think I tennis. 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 Yeah, you've been digging tennis. Um, well, I've always I've been digging cool. tennis more, but I I've always dug tennis. Um, tennis is cool because it's it's as we talk about doing things, looking outward and going inward. Tennis is such an individual sport. Like, there's no excuses. Mm, that's true. Either you Can't play blame. good or you play bad. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. there's no teammate to pick you up in. Um, and you look at some of these. I've been to a few tennis tournaments, and people love. The, I'm, I mean, I'm not looking for the glory of it, but just something about tennis is like you're out there, and it's like, yeah, like you're either good or you're bad. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it'd be really cool um, to, you know, be a professional tennis player. I guess for team sport, probably football. Um, I always like playing wide receiver and pickup games mm-hmm. or tight end mm-hmm. or something like that. So. Yeah. I guess I'd, I'd go with that. All right, cool. Probably so, tennis. Yeah, that's sweet. Second question. If you could go see any any game, <clears throat> any time period, any sport, any place, what's like your your dream front row seat? Um, when the United States beat the Soviet Union Ooh. in the 1980 <laughs> Olympics oh, hockey man. semifinals. That was you had it ready. Uh, that's, you had it ready. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that is that is a that is a very easy answer for me. All right, cool. That's oh. just with everything going on in the country right with, out of your with the Cold War <laughs> yeah, yeah. and everything. You just look at it's one of the greatest games to watch. If you guys ever get a chance, go on. You, they have the whole game on YouTube. Al Michaels does a great job um, <laughs> calling the game, and it's just like it's in America in the small arena mm-hmm. in Lake Placid. Yeah. I think it's Lake Placid. Lake Placid, yeah. for sure. Um, and Man, the crowd is just, it meant everything. Just a hockey game. Incredible. And that was before he, hockey was even really, really big in the United States. Yeah. It was just this big deal. And all crowd these young went kids went out. A bunch of college kids beat the best hockey team in the world. The team that like whooped the NHL All Stars like, yeah. every year. Yeah, yeah. Um, really, really cool. I, that's, what, that's what I would think. Nice. All right. Awesome. I think Felicity's got a, yes. a cue for Pierce. Yes. I have a question for Pierce. And I hope that you have. Um, an answer and that this is <laughs> well, so. what happened last time <laughs> go back and watch uh holly jolly patience is that look at one? you knowing all the yeah. holly jolly titles of the episodes yeah. factual factual <laughs> facts let's hear it pierce <laughs> yes what shampoo and conditioner do you use i knew Ooh. you were gonna go hair <laughs> which looks great by the way with those headphones yeah, look so cool all right if smart. i'm in, if I'm in a rush i have a i have a two-in-one that'll just put in okay what brand uh every man jack that's what it's every called man my, jack. My mom okay. got it. i was a little, I was a little skeptical okay. at first and then i was like you know what i'll give it a try put it in i was like you know what it's pretty pretty all right and then uh, sometimes i'll take my time in the shower and then i have this i was at a it's a long story on how I, it originated i guess i was at um someplace in florida with my uh, dad's side of the family we were staying at this hotel and they had this really nice orange smelling shampoo and conditioner okay and i've been using it since then (laughs) (laughs) back down in florida yep and so i'll either use that with but i'll use the the orange shampoo and then my mom literally like two days or three days ago she was like oh there's this coconut one and i was a little skeptical about that (laughs) one too because i don't i don't even know why i was like coconut in my hair do you trust it you know i heard coconut's good for the for the hair I'm sure. I believe yeah. I've like, heard. I believe I've it. heard some stuff about that too, but I was like, people drink it and eat it, and now I'm and cook it with my it. Hair. It's, a, with <laughs> it's a super, it's a super nut, power, yeah. super fruit. I don't know. So, do you do like the scrunching? I do. Yeah. Yeah. Do you use gel? I don't. I scrunch to my like forearms are beating. <laughs> Sometimes I'm just like just get dry. Awesome. Like, especially in the mornings if I wake up late. But I haven't woken up late yet for school, so let's go. We're good, good. Right on. Go. good job. Yeah. All right. Well, that was a great rendition of "Hit yep. Me with Your Best Shot." Fire away. All right, <laughs> we're, we're moving on. We're moving on. Uh, so, a question to segue us back into the the real conversation: What prompts us to quickly trust and go to something else? I think when you've built, I was thinking about this actually. I think when you've built any sort of relationship with it, and I'm not even talking about just people, like I'm talking about anything, like you can have um, a trust in something that you do every day or something or your car that you drive every day, like anything that you have a built trust for, whether it be um, something living or something not, 
I think when you've built trust, a level of trust with anything, that's what you begin to trust in. I think it kind of goes back to what we were talking about. You guys were talking about in the last episode of the patience, right? Mm-hmm. We live in the society that's so right now. Mm. And maybe God's plan isn't right now. Maybe it's, okay, we're going to, you know, we're going to, you're going to sit here for a while, but this is going to be okay because later on, this is what's going to happen. And right now, we're looking for things that can help us right now. Like, what is the what is the thing that I can think of right now that's going to fix my situation as fast as possible? And that's usually not the best situation. The best situation is God, and God may not want to fix that right now. But certainly, so when you, what you are thinking, what you think can fix it, more than likely isn't the best thing mm-hmm. to fix your problem. And what's interesting is a lot of those things we know are temporary. Mm. Like, we know that whatever that thing is, like, we know it... It, it might be half an hour, it might be the rest of the night. Whatever it is, we know is temporary. We know it's not going to solve. Yeah. Ultimately, yeah. what's going on? Yeah. Which is interesting. Yeah, I think, like we were saying before, everything ultimately fails. My mom, one time, she said this to me, and this really changed the way I think about trust. She said that she has found in her life that anything she puts above God, He will take it away, no matter. Any, no matter what it is, anything that she trusts above God, it gets removed eventually. Everything else fails, no matter what we turn to. And I've experienced this in my life too. Like every idol I've ever had, like everything I've put above God, I've watched him take that away or Mm -hmm. remove its place in my life in some capacity. So when we talk about everything fails, I think it's true. And it could fail because God allowed it to fail. Well, our heart, I think a pastor said that our heart is just an idol make, an idol making factory. It's so like you said, our, our heart's constantly clinging to something, hoping to be our God. And as you said, it just ultimately fails. Yeah. That was interesting that you're like, <laughs> you're like well, everything ultimately fails. So my mom, <laughs> I was like, where is this going? <laughs> no, guys, I love that was a my great, mom. Yes, yeah, yeah. My mom's, my great, mom's a queen, guys. <laughs> great inspiration queen from your mom. Hensel. <laughs> Shout out to the Cedarville following. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. All right. So trusting in God. Important. Yeah. Can I read some scripture before we uh we close out here? Please do. Yeah. All right. Well, one person who I think who always trusted in the Lord is is David, King David. And I think what's interesting with David is you saw the ups and downs in his life. You saw the times he, he failed and many different ways in sin. You saw times where he trusted in the Lord and he succeeded in life. And it's just cool to see him, even when he was doing well, even when he failed, he seemed to, for the most part, you can kind of trust in the Lord to continue to carry him or to pick him back up. And this is going to be from Psalm 9, 9 to 10. I got nervous that maybe this was one of those Psalms that wasn't David, where it was like a, a mascal of somebody else. But it is David, so I can continue with my story. I got nervous. Uh, Psalm 9, 9 to 10 says, The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. And those who know your name put their trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. So I think when it comes to trust, ultimately, you want to put your trust in something that is faithful something that has never let you down, something that is constant, something that is always there. Yeah. And I think we see in Psalm, we see throughout Scripture that that one thing is God. Yeah. And we believe, right, that God, the same God who was David's God, same God who has created the earth is the same God now. And I'll never forget, Amen. Pastor Henschel, Pastor Dave, <laughs> had a sermon maybe a year and a half, two years ago, and they were going through Exodus um, and he, I never even knew this verse verses in the Bible. And I've, I've read this I've, when I taught on anxiety and this is what people call their life verse. And he, he read this and he spoke on this and it changed my life because I was having trouble trusting God for a lot of things. And he read this and it just came clear. It's, um, Exodus fourteen fourteen, uh, which says, let me locate it real quick. Uh, and Moses said to the people, fear not, stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord which he will work for you today for the Egyptians whom you see today shall you, you shall never see again. Uh, the Lord will fight for you. You only have to be silent or still. So that was yeah. 13 and 14. Um, but it's just the Egyptians could be anything in your life. You know, what is your, I said, when I taught on anxiety, what are your Egyptians are your Egyptians in your life? Right. What do you need to trust God about? Um, because you know, like I said, months ago, it may not, God might not part the Red Sea, but he'll get you across 
they'll get you across it somehow. And it's just a matter of if he can do that for, if he can open the Red Sea up for a whole group of people to escape from bondage and uh, captivity, what can he do for you on just like a much smaller basis in the grand scheme Mm -hmm. of things, you Mm -hmm. know? Yeah. And he might part it right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Pierce, how have you seen, like, how have you seen in your life your trust in God strengthen? I would say with probably school and people the mm-hmm. most. Mm-hmm. Just like sometimes I was, I think it was maybe just last week, I wasn't like really crazy stressed out. But just like schoolwork, I was like, wow, I got this assignment, this assignment, this assignment, this is due tomorrow. And I was like, just sat down, calm myself down. I was like, you know what? It's not that much. Just mm-hmm. did it. And I trusted that it was going to be fine. And then <laughs> it was fine. Yeah. And then I guess in people, like, they were, I guess just friends, because I would always have, like, some people who I wasn't sure if I should, like, stick around them just because of their actions. And then it's like that person would just reach out to me and um, I'd be like, okay, this is definitely a sign that I should be in this person. Cause it was, I was, um, one of my best friends, Aiden, we were just, I was just at his house and randomly I was like, I, it was definitely on my heart that I wanted to talk to him about God, but I didn't know how. And I just trusted that he was going to to show me somehow. Mm. And then we were just in his backyard and, and we just started, we had like this hour and a half conversation in his backyard about like the Bible and God and then all that stuff. And it was like. I didn't even know I was going to say that. That's awesome. <laughs> Praise God. That's Shout awesome. out Aiden. Man. Yeah. I'm going to tell him to listen to it now. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. For sure. Oh, that's such a cool story. Yeah. I yeah. think that's great. I feel like that's something I, I feel as well. I'm like always, I feel stressed. Like I have to create this way and become up with this opportunity, whatever. But I think just trusting God that God will open up the door. God will open up a conversation. I would yeah. say like Trust even me. with this, I was like, I should probably prepare find some things and I didn't even know what I was going to do. And then I was just sitting in class today. I opened my Bible. I was like, boom, 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 boom. And I found a bunch of scripture that was like, just went perfectly with trusting. Mm-hmm. And it was just like kind of resonated with me. And I was like, I got nothing to worry about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah. What, what was like a verse? Like what's like one of your, well, definitely one that I always like that I always liked was Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. Like <laughs> he says, um, for the Lord said, he knows the plans he has for us, plans to prosper us, not to forsake us, to give us a hope and a future. Like, That's it. Like, maybe I'm worried about something now, but he's going to prosper me. Yeah. Like, my future, he has hope for my future, so what should I worry about? Yeah. Just making sure I stick with him, I guess. Yeah. Amen. That's awesome. Yeah. Stick with him. Stick yeah. with I him. It. I like <laughs> it. Put it up. <laughs> Let's get a sticker. <laughs> Amen. Speaking of stickers. Speaking of stickers. There might be some fresh wave stickers. Oh, might they be. They might be coming out soon, so stay tuned. Let us know stay in the comments. Tuned. Would you put a fresh wave sticker on your laptop, cooler, phone, or Yeti. device, Yeti, etc., to help advertise our podcast? Let us know in the comments yes. if you would like one. So, yeah. Yeah. That's it. Pumped. That's it. Trust in God. Pierce, the man. Thanks for bringing out a great, great conversation yeah. about something that we really... We need to do every day. Yeah. Yeah. And, and stick just, with God. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Glad to be here. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And Tim, you all right? You're all right. Thanks, <laughs> nice, man. Uh, <laughs> everyone, don't worry. I'll be back behind <laughs> off the camera next time. Yeah. So you won't have to see me. You'll just maybe hear me. So. <laughs> Glad to have yeah. you jump on the other side. Shout too. out Caleb, who's doing my job for me today. Shout Woo! out Caleb. He's our producer today. Thank you so much, Caleb. I know we got to get you out for that Awana thing like three minutes ago, but um, <laughs> appreciate you, bud. That's a wrap yeah. for the Fresh Wave podcast. See Thanks you for next tuning in. Thursday.